fascinated about the community driven nature of javascript growth from the early days of the internet to being one of the most popular languages in the world it's still a well known fact that there has been many many frameworks and libraries for building ui in just in the past decade and each of these frameworks have their own ways of doing things so every time a bunch of frameworks agree upon a certain way of doing things like they all agree that is when we should actually notice one such trend that all the new upcoming frameworks all seem to agree upon is built in reactivity reactivity for the state but even more funnier is that react is not reactive according to the actual internal team of react and they say that they should have called it scheduled instead of reactive or react so before we get to the why it's important to understand what is reactivity or what is reactive programming So Richard is who's the creator of Swell has famously said in his talk that there are as many definitions of reactive programming as there are reactive programmers. When you hear this the first thing that comes to mind may be something like RSJS or Mobix but reactivity has been around for a long time it's not a new concept. One such thing that's reactive is spreadsheets. So if you see in spreadsheets if you update a certain row and there's a formula applied all the subsequent rows that are affected by will be updated automatically. That that means it's reactive to a change in and updates the UI uh, accordingly. JavaScript as a programming language is not inherently reactive. For example, let's say we have a variable b and a c and we are creating another variable a which is in b plus c and then we are changing b's value to 10. If we console log a it will still be 3 because we are not able to keep this relationship that a is b plus c like in a spreadsheet uh, that even if we change the value of b the a doesn't reflect that so javascript inherently is not reactive kibida says reactive programming is a declarative programming paradigm concerned with data streams and propagation of change let's take a step back and analyze this from a high level let's take our own youtube channel home page as an example In essence all we're doing is most of the time we're reacting to user interactions right whenever the user interacts with the website we are updating the UI and reacting to those changes so in this context it fits the reactive programming paradigm perfectly we're reacting to changes on a high level UI development composes of three things so first we have the actual UI components which determine the structure the look and feel of the UI there is the state or the data this is the piece of data on which this UI component may depend upon and then there are events that happens like user events side effects it's it essentially denotes something that happens which triggers a change in state or ui or whatever it's a, it's an interplay of these three components and on a high level this is what every framework does for example let's take react we have the state here the use state which gives us a piece of state and data and then the jsx that returns an actual piece of the ui this is what determines the structure of it and then we have even listeners that helps us react to events and side effects like uh, you know use effects and stuff like that so it's an interplay between these three things all the way One more thing to note is that browser at the end of the day is rendering out a grid of pixels like all your code at the end of the day is a bunch of pixels on your screen that the browser has to render out and it's an expensive process whenever there is a ui update needed we need to make sure only the those small areas that need the update is actually updated only those region pixels need to be rendered and not the entire screen so that this can be performing so Let's understand this further by React is in reactive with a simple code example. Let's say we have a simple React component my app and it has two pieces of state name and address and in the UI representation we have two input fields that we can enter these values and it just updates the state here on change with the event listener and then there is a greeting component here just defined here which just outputs the name. So if I type in some name it just outputs the name and if I type in the address field nothing happens it just sets the address field but you can see there is something strange happening here. It's that even if I type the address, you can see the greeting component is getting re-rendered because this console log is getting run here. So even though this greeting component does not depend on this address state, it still gets re-rendered when I type it. Now the reason for this is because React is not aware of the relationship between this state and this UI components or relationship between the states. What it does is whenever inside a component some piece of state changes, it just blasts and re-renders the entire component and the UI. This entire subtree gets re-rendered. Now React does provide us with a memo HOC higher order component that we can wrap the greeting so that it's memoized. Still, it's like an additional check, like it's it's not a real clean solution. So when some event happens, React does two different steps essentially. So first step is the VDOM diffing and reconciliation. It may sound a lot, but it's actually quite simple. Now let's say I'm about to switch this particular filter from popular to latest, right? So essentially, it has a snapshot of current state of the DOM before the change happened. and it also has a representation of the ui after the change it happened Just note that this is in memory it's not committed to the actual ui it's not visible to the user yet 
and it doesn't store an actual photograph or screenshot actually this is the web document that you have and this is the dom representation a tree like representation of it so react stores a lightweight copy of this dom tree in memory and it's called a virtual dom we already mentioned react takes before and after snapshot and it just compares both these snapshots and figures out what has changed in the virtual dom and then it applies only those changes to the actual browser dom so just this part of the tree is re-rendered only this part of the ui is re-rendered and it reduces the browser workload does this with the help of a diffing algorithm and the process is called reconciliation once the change has been identified what to change in the ui it pushes it into a scheduler it is the scheduler that decides when the ui should be updated and once it it batches and schedules the update and it up finally updates the ui it was done on purpose actually because react does not want to be fully reactive the primary goal of react is to make sure that we split the task batch it and schedule it and update the ui in an optimum manner and also the component architecture right that we know and love like breaking down the whole ui into components and that whole thing so if we have a graph for preference of vdom react would be at the very top react favors virtual dom and all the new upcoming frameworks like swell solid quick all they prefer to make changes to the actual dom directly and like getting rid of the entire virtual dom step because it's seen as an overhead Whereas something like view will be in the middle, it has both virtual DOM and reactivity, so that's another good discussion. So then the solution would be easy, right? Whenever some event happens, let's keep it reactive and just update the UI directly with no additional steps. But there is a small problem in doing this. It has to do with frame rates. It's a key concept of animations and frame rates are the number of frames visible per second. The number of images that you pack into a single second, the number of frames. So the human eye is having a FPS of like 60 FPS or 30 FPS around that, it varies. But generally 60 FPS is the sweet spot. As you can see in 60 FPS we'll see a smooth motion, but at lower frame rate it's like there is a motion blur and the animation gets janky and it's not very smooth. But that is the sweet spot that most browser vendors also try to target. Now in case if the number of updates are huge, it can result in wasted or dropped frames. So you can see this is like the rendering cycle of the browser where we are like rendering each of the frames and the view for that particular frame is rendered. And these are the updates that are coming in the user events or whatever. So if the number of updates are large, like then it can result in like drop frames. This is covered in detail in the talk by Sean Wang or Swix in why React is not reactive to check it out. So it's pretty cool can also be seen in reactive system like spreadsheets also like imagine if you have like like complex relationship large number of columns sometimes if you open it the whole system will get hanged like the spreadsheet will get frozen because there are too many updates coming in so how do we find a middle ground now we can get inspired from the classic observer pattern and let's take youtube as an example right so whenever you as a viewer are watching videos you have your feed that youtube curates so all the different content creators will be pushing the videos onto the platform and it's not like when they push, you'll directly get the videos, right? It will be curated in your feed. It's your feed that pulls in the required videos that it thinks you'll be interested to watching. So content creators like me will be creating videos and pushing it onto the platform. For viewers, your feed will be pulling in the data as required. So we can use the same thing here. So whenever there is an update that needs to be pushed, we push it not directly onto the UI, but instead onto like a middle layer, like a scheduler or something. It decides when that uh, change goes to the actual UI, right? So there is a pull happening. There is a push here, which pushes the update onto this. And there is a pull and because this is what decides when this will be uh, viewed now. So this is the um, arrangement that we can use because this will ensure the smooth frame rate. So instead of a fully reactive system like this, we can keep the reactive part, but we will also have some sort of batching and scheduling. And in fact, this is how Solid actually does it. Let's see Solid in action. Now the same code that I had earlier written in React, I've converted it into solid. So two components, two pieces of states. So instead of states, we have something called a signals right now. Now in this case, if you see, if I type in the address, nothing changes. Even if I type in the name also, the component isn't re -rendered. We have added two console logs here. And this means that there is a fine grain reactivity happening. Whenever this piece of state uh, changes, Solid internally knows which all parts of the UI depends on it and it updates it accordingly because the component functions itself are just run once. In a sense, it understands the relationship between this data and parts of the UI. Now Solid uses something called as a dependency graph under the hood. So there is no VDOM and it just keeps track of all the relationship between all the signals and all the UI components with the help of a direct dependency graph like this. So it already knows what's going on. 
and whenever a change happen only that particular small section of the ui is re-rendered like this name that is the only part that's being re-rendered nothing else so it's very efficient so because of the signals and the dependency graph magic solid is aware of what's happening all the time and it also uses batching to make sure that multiple updates are like fit into like a single render cycle to uh, like reduce the load on the browser and keep the frame rate smooth and it also provides us with an optional scheduler which we can use so it's out of the scope of this video but that's how the whole thing works the added benefit of using reactive programming is it results in a much better developer experience and cleaner code if you were to use imperative style of programming you would tell it what you want and how to achieve it and that's a lot of code the same thing you can do it declaratively and, and it's much cleaner because you are just specifying what you want and not how to achieve it. So it definitely results in a cleaner developer experience. This is evident because you can see the code is very clean and there isn't any uh, additional dependencies like in React because it uses reactive uh, primitive uh, called signals in it. So with that it's easier for us to understand why all the modern frameworks are pushing for reactivity because it's fast and it's do let me know your thoughts on reactivity on your experience in the comment section below and uh, yeah do like and share and subscribe and all the good stuff and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching